Hi, welcome to Is a Data Thing. This is the very first video in what I hope is a long series of videos focused on information architecture. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is that? <laughs> um, that is not an uncommon question. Um, but first, before I get into any of the details, I want to first start off by saying a big thank you to the LinkedIn community that really um, helped me understand and um, get that this this was a thing I should maybe do. And uh, I really hope that a lot of the community that is there on LinkedIn in the information architecture area uh, will participate in this because I think it's going to be fun. I think that we can do some really cool uh, data dives and tool reviews and look at all the cool research that's going on out there in the world. It is not always going to be me as a talking head. Um, that's just this first video, which is just introductions and getting to know me a little bit. So for those that don't know me, my name is Ashley Faith. I have been working in uh, the information architecture space for quite some time, um, over 10 years, and I do have advanced degrees in information architecture, advanced semantics, um, really focusing on knowledge graph, and if you don't know what that is, don't worry, we will do that, that is another video. Uh, and basically just human interaction with information, which you know, is really important to a lot of everyday things. Whether you are uh, working in a grocery store where you might wonder, when you go around the outside perimeter of every grocery store, don't you wonder why the bread, the meat and the cheese, and all the vegetables are on the outside? Why is that? Well, it has a lot to do with information architecture. It's not just digital, it also is physical. And you might also be very familiar with things like Amazon and things like Spotify and you might wonder how do they know I really like jazz music or how does Amazon know I really need a cat toy? How does it know this? So I cannot say and I cannot profess that I know how every single thing works behind the scenes on some of those tools um, and some of those interactions. But what I can say is I do know the information architecture techniques in order to do those kinds of behaviors. And that's really what we're going to focus on here. We're also going to make sure that there are plenty of data sets for you to play around with. Uh, we have three different types of videos. Um, I'm just going to call those series. Um, and those would include things like skill challenges where I will do a video and it will be live so we can all talk to each other. And when we do those, I'm going to give you a prompt and sometimes it will include an environment being set up on an open source tool with an open source data set that you can actually use the skills that you're, you're you're learning here um, and some other times it's going to be more like me asking you something and then you can actually participate in the comments below and I will go through those and I will critique and give feedback um, and hopefully others in the community will do so as well this is not um, just my channel it is hopefully something that will bring together many people from beginner to expert people that are just really thirsty for knowledge uh, and that actually leads me to why am I even doing this um, a big reason for that is you know I had some really wonderful people in my life that um, taught me how to do some of this even before I got into college and before I learned anything else on the job which by the way I think I actually learned more on the job than in school, but don't tell my professors I said that. Um, but you know, that's part of this is learning through experiences and learning through being able to do and see. I really am excited about that. Um, some of the other kinds of series is a show and tell, which is very similar to what I just talked about, where we're actually gonna go through different tools and, and different um, interfaces and kind of walk through 
well, why did they do this? And what are some of the things to consider if you're trying to do this kind of interface or this kind of architecture? Um, also doing some walkthroughs of how do you set these things up on the back end? There's, there's ETL pipelines, which is um, extract, transform, and load for those that don't know that. Um, there's a lot of tools out there that do them. There's a lot of considerations even for that and how to get the piping all together. Other things don't need anything that complicated. Sometimes you just need a simple taxonomy, which that's something else that we'll go over. Or maybe you want to start to do some things with artificial intelligence. Again, this is not going to be all programming and all coding. I really want to make sure this is something that's engaging. It makes things relatable. If you're not really, you know, a coder or a programmer, you're still going to really get something out of this. And if you are somebody that does that, you also get something from this. So there's going to be a mix of different videos. I really hope that you like, subscribe, share, hit the notification button, whatever normal YouTubers say, I am not one of those people. Maybe I am going to be after this. I just picked this platform because I know how much some people are hurting right now and uh, people are wanting to learn new skills and get their mind off of things that are going on. And I think information architecture is one of those great things that not only can you find a skill that's going to be uh, really helpful to your everyday life, how do I organize my CD collection? people even have CDs anymore? Maybe it's retro. I don't know. Maybe you need somebody to help you organize your closet. These are just silly examples, but you can use these kind of techniques even in your everyday life. But we're also going to go through even more advanced techniques. For instance, recommendation engines or, you know, how to actually structure something so that a large group of people understand what you're trying to do. So here's a way I think about information architecture. Imagine you are looking at a filing cabinet and it's a filing cabinet in your, uh, in your office and you get to decide what uh, labels that you put on all of those files. What if your mom or dad or your boss comes in and they get to put labels on everything in your filing cabinet? because they need to find things too. And what about your coworker or your niece or your nephew? What if they need to come in and they're allowed to put labels on everything so that they can find what they're looking for? You can see where this is going. Not everybody's gonna put the same labels on things because not everybody thinks the same way about things. So this is actually a very important piece to information architecture, and that is people's mental models. How do they think about things? That's actually gonna be a very large component in these first few weeks of videos. The videos, by the way, will be on every Tuesday and Thursday, and sometimes it will be me, sometimes it will be a guest speaker, sometimes it will be talking head Ashley, hopefully not always. Um, I'm really, really hoping it's not always because I'm sure you want to actually see this stuff going on and not just me. So um, that is something that we're going to focus on with, um, I had mentioned there's the skills challenge, there's going to be show and tell, and then there's also going to be a series um, called commentary edition. And so what that is going to be is uh, based on your recommendations, yes, I want to hear from you. Uh, what are some of the tools? What are some of the techniques that you hear about or uh, that you have come across that you want somebody to just walk through and talk about, you know, the considerations and the things that you should think about, some of my own interpretations on things, um, maybe getting others, you know, to, to chime in. All of those are fair game. And again, I want really this to be a space for all of us to really interact and and to talk about these topics. Uh, so yes, I'm an expert in what I do. I absolutely love what I do. I love it, I love it, I love it. And I hope you all can love it too after we uh, do some teaching and some, some co-learning. Please be respectful. This is a place of learning for everybody. Um, and that is, like I said, people that have never done this before and people that are experts in this. I think that you're always learning and as soon as you feel like you're not learning anymore and that you're the top of your game, you probably need to learn something new because I don't think anybody should be there. So with that, I am going to do the first type 
of series here, which we're going to call, like I said, the um, commentary edition. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and we are going to look at an article from the Wall Street Journal. So. Okay, so this is the article that we are looking at and it is called how to make a career pandemic proof. So first of all, I will say I am not saying anything I teach you will make your career pandemic proof. I think that is a very bold statement and I am not making it <laughs> and I would be nervous if I was the Wall Street Journal for making that claim. However, there is some really good research that is contained in this article. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to post my commentary on this uh, topic and this article in the description below so you can actually look at it and you know you don't have to take notes during this uh, this video but you know you certainly can and please again share with others uh, so let's go and look at some of the highlights so this article is really talking about the current situation that we find ourselves in there are a lot of people that are either furloughed or have lost their jobs or people that had one type of job and are not feeling comfortable that that job is going to be what they always thought it was going to be or people that are you know looking at their life choices and realizing that they're not happy doing what they were doing before and are looking for new things so let's get into what this article is talking about and maybe you can get some good sound bites for your boss or whoever you're going to be talking to about this maybe your college uh students that are out there okay so i'm not going to go through this whole article right i'm just going to go into the highlights so i'm just going to go very slow so you don't get a little sick while i'm moving but i'm going to post this so you can see and read all of this all right so here we're looking at LinkedIn downloads of certificate eligible classes. So LinkedIn, as you probably, maybe, maybe not know, has a whole learning curriculum area of, of their tool and, or their service. And I think that they're all for uh, profit, so you have to pay for them. So again, that's a big part of this video series is I am trying to make this as accessible as possible so that you don't feel like in order to learn new skills, especially skills that are so relevant to so many things like information architecture, they have to pay for it. So um, again, if you think you do need that kind of certificate, there is plenty of opportunity for those. And I will be sharing um, some of those opportunities in the descriptions below for each of the videos. So please check that out if you are interested. So here you're seeing that um, project management, accounting, and information architecture, or information technology, I should say, um, have increased more than 600%. So the reason for that is these are very applicable to many different types of jobs, even if your job isn't information architect. You could be taxonomist, or you could be DAM, which is digital asset manager, or you could be project manager or agile developer. There is a lot of different titles that are associated with information architecture. Again, that's going to be another video and we will definitely get into all of that because what's the difference between an ontologist and a knowledge engineer and a taxonomist? You can see where I'm going with this. We're going to go into that in a different video. You can also see that Harvard and Stanford also have um, a lot of online courses that are going on. Again, I actually know of one at Stanford that I would highly recommend um, just looking into. There's another one at um, Indiana University. Again, it's a MOOC, so that one is, is totally free. I'm going to link some of those in the descriptions below as well. And again, as we go through these series, we're going to get into how do you select which curriculum is best for you. We're going to review some of them. We're going to talk about what is important for information architecture and what is just nice to have so that you maybe have some more information to make a decision. So you can hear, see those have gone up by six to 15 times their normal rates during what's going on right now. Again, because people are trying to find those skills. So let's dig a little deeper here. Okay, so this is actually, I think, the most powerful statement in this entire article. Firms that lay off workers during a crisis generally do not hire them back. And that is a very hard statement, but there is a lot of research backing that up. But that does not mean that you can't get your old job back, and that doesn't mean that you can't get an even better job. This, I think, is 
a way to take a negative statement and make it into more positive statement where just because something bad happened, there's um, the, one of the guys on Shark Tank, um, Rod, uh, Robert Herjavec, he actually says this all the time. He got fired from his job at one point and it made him become an entrepreneur. So we can all do that sort of thing. Not maybe ma being an entrepreneur, if that's not what your skill set is, but you can learn more skills. You can expand on what you're doing. And one thing I love about information architecture is you can also express your creativity. I think that some people feel that information architecture is something that you have to be very techy and you know very um, you know uh, very strict in your thinking, or maybe you know got to be a programmer or a mathematician. And you know, I don't think that all of that is accurate. Um, I think that you have to be precise, and I think that you do need to be able to think in an abstract way to kind of do the mental gymnastics to to think about some of these things. But I think that all of us have the capability of doing that. And I hope through the techniques that you can learn through this channel, you'll be able to express some of those things. Um, Information architecture is also very closely related to UX, which is user experience. And that does often have a lot of creative outlets within it, but they do go hand in hand. And we'll definitely get into how data can be fun. I absolutely love playing with data. I love playing with data and letting it speak to me as if it's telling me a story because that's what data can do for you. And I hope again, that we can get into some of that in this video. All right, so the other thing to just highlight here is some of the things that companies often invest in during a crisis is this, is automation. And you might think, well, geez, well, automation, that means I need to know programming, and that means I'm going to get replaced by a robot. No, what it means is people are looking for more effective ways of doing things. And you can quote me on this next part, which is machines are not smart. Even the most brilliant quantum computer, it is computing based on what a human has told it what to do. Therefore, any computer is only as smart as the human ingenuity that goes into it. So therefore, you will always need people to help with these things. That doesn't mean you need an army of people, but it does mean that your skills are still valuable. Your thought process, the way you think about things are still valuable. And information architecture is the perfect way to marry automation and your smarts and your way of thinking about things. So that is definitely something we're gonna go through. The other thing that you'll also think about with information architecture is, you know, when you are going into this field, you can often work from home, which is a huge benefit, um, especially when right now you don't really want to be around everybody else's cooties. <laughs> so um, I quite often work from home even before all of this happened. Um, and I know that a lot of people also in this field are in similar situations. Another thing that I want to highlight in this article, let me go down a little bit. is right here. So if you're one of those people that are thinking about going back to school, or maybe you're a new graduate and you're thinking about either going into college or into a master's program, do not take me in the way where uh, I, don't, I don't suggest that you don't go to college, not suggesting that at all. Um, I have had a wonderful and fruitful college career and I, I would never give it up. It was just, it was an amazing experience. But I will say that just with everything else, you have to understand where the time and the place for something is. And so what the data is showing is, yes, people with a college education were not as hard hit um, during the recent issues that have been going on with the economy. However, the jobs that are opening up are having a sharper decline in professional jobs, those where you need um, highly skilled, um, very big um, degree programs behind you, um, then those requiring less than a bachelor's degree. So what does that tell us? So what that tells us is yes, if you're planning on going to college, if your dream is to become, you know, a computer scientist or, or a data scientist or, you know, a teacher, 
all of those things have really great rewarding experiences in college. But what I am saying here is I think information architecture is one of those things where, yes, getting a, a book, going to class kind of education is 100% a great thing to go and do. But I also believe that it is something that you can learn as a skill without having to go to college, if that is what you choose. I think this also can be a great supplement for people that are going to college. So again, I want this to be more of a, a welcoming experience to wherever you are in your career path. Um, and this article actually goes into a lot more detail um, into all of the statistics and you can look up, you know, who uh, Mr. Sigleman, no idea if I'm saying that correctly. Um, you can actually go into all of this data and you can dig into it yourself. And that is one thing I do want to preface all of the videos here, which is everything that I go through, I do have some expertise, I do have my own experiences, but please keep in mind, the things that I go over are going to be from my own perspective, and I 100% welcome anybody else's perspective. So that's what the comment section is for. I am also going to be um, inviting other people to participate so that we can uh, discuss things together. And so um, when we do have other people that are uh, joining us, we're going to probably post those ahead of time. Um, I'm, I'm setting up a website so that you can go and just check what um, the different curriculum is going to be for that week. Uh, there are going to be quite a few live events because I do feel that education is not a one-way street. It really is a communication between, you know, a teacher and a pupil because I will say out of all of my years of teaching, I learn something every single time I sit down with a student. And so I'm really excited to see what all of you have to say. I really hope that um, we can make something of this channel that really makes the world a little bit of a better place and I probably sound really naive for saying that but I really do truly believe that and so with that I want to thank you again for joining me for this first video I really hope you join me for the next one on Thursday the next video I'm going to be releasing um, how do you understand users mental models and it's a really really cool way of talking about it I have a great visual to share with you um, again all of the materials I go through are going to be in the descriptions of each video and with that I will bid you adieu and I hope to see you in the next video thank you very much and have a great day